Hey guys, what is going on? In today's video, I am extremely excited because I'm gonna be talking about my new Renav Goods Engineer Boots in black shinky horsehide. Just look at these. I don't even have to do much talking. I mean, they, they sort of speak for themselves, am I right? I mean, look at the texture on these. One thing that I really have started to realize recently is just how amazing shinky leathers are. In particular, their horse hide. It's shrunken, so it's going to uh, draw out the more muted out characteristics that the hide would have had originally. Because it's shrunken, I think by about 30%, it exhibits this insane ripple pattern, what I like to call honeycombing, because it does resemble a honeycomb in a lot of cases. The hide is going to vary throughout the surface. So um, you're going to get some areas like this that are very highly, highly textured, and then other areas that are just sort of, you know, smooth and or just sort of mildly honeycombed or mildly ripply. I realized that I needed a black engineer months ago when my buddy Mario, he actually worked out a deal for me to get some John Lofgren engineers in a size eight, which I did review, um, but they were just too small. I'm a nine Brannock, I needed that eight and a half. The ending was happy, however, because I landed these flathead engineers in natural chrome Excel in a size eight and a half. Perfect fit, couldn't ask for a better fit on these, but upon trading out those black John Lofgren engineers, which were so beautiful, just a half size too small, I realized that the time was incumbent on me to get black engineers. Black engineer boots are probably the most iconic. I really love natural chrome XL. I really love engineer boots in other colors. Um, I recently reviewed some olive rough out engineers uh, by Quans, and not to mention my stitch down patina Thunderdome pair from a couple years ago now were in natural crust shell cordovan. And these things are just absolutely phenomenal. Really, really love these. I'm really happy with how these have patinated up. Uh, they started off as like a fuzzy white nubuck color, very much like a bone color, very much, very much a white color. And it has morphed into this really gorgeous sort of golden natural skin color. Uh, pretty close to my skin tone actually. <laughs> I did condition them, but yeah, they've really patinated up beautifully. Now, the main difference that you're gonna notice between these two pairs is these are my first engineers ever. I went for a six inch engineer. This is before I started exp experimenting with the eight inch engineers. Now, this is a typical engineer height right here, the flat heads. So these are 10 inch engineers, these are eight inch, and then these are six inch engineers. So this is the traditional height of a standard engineer. Now, I really love these. I'm happy I have a pair of traditional engineers in my rotation, but that said, that shaft riding up that far into my pant leg is a bit intrusive. I have to say, recently, as Truman introduced their Upland model and as Grantstone introduced their field boot model, I'm finding that I do like an eight inch shaft. I really do. It's a nice, healthy departure from the six inch shaft. I still, don't get me wrong, I still love six inch shafts. They're probably my go-to. They're by far the most easy to throw on. They're unobtrusive. They don't uh, interfere with your pants hardly at all. The eight inch, a little bit more bold, but I don't find that it inhibits my pant legs, even my slim pant legs, very much at all with the eight inch. These definitely, the uh, 10 inch, you definitely need to start, you know, if you follow almost vintage style, you'll know he talks at nauseum about pairing a 10 inch engineer with the proper width of a pant leg. My favorite pant leg width is a 14 inch leg opening, but Jake argues for a 16 or even a 20 inch leg opening if you're gonna accommodate a really tall engineer like this. That said, I find that the eight inch is a perfect happy medium. Very happy with the eight inch. In fact, I ordered another pair of these in burgundy shinky horse hide. Uh, I'll be reviewing those next, but I wanted to get the black ones out of the way for now. I think black is a really iconic color for engineer boots for a few reasons. Okay, so this is from an article from Gear Patrol, and this is an article entitled The 11 Best Engineer Boots for Men, and in it they talk about how when steam engines were the height of technology, men were employed to feed the newfangled machines loads of coal to keep them running. To combat the obvious fiery hazards associated with the job, the engineer boot was invented. 
What is an engineer boot? The original engineer boots were designed to protect the feet of men who fed coals into steam engines. It melded the tall pull on style of horse riding boots with the supportive arch and sole of a work boot. A buckled ankle strap distinguishes this style from other pull on boots. A little bit of a history on engineer boots. The workwear design joined the tall pull on style of horse riding boots with the supportive arch and sole of a work boot and would move from feeding coal to shifting gears on motorcycles. The likes of Marlon Brando would help popularize the pull-on in biker circles and is now how most people associate the boots today. Search biker boot and it's likely to pull up the droves of engineer boots. What's the difference between cowboy boots and engineer boots? It's the buckled ankle strap that gives the engineer boot its distinct look. So here are my chisos number six cowboy boots in rough out and as you can see yeah what's the main difference between these two boots like the article said it's this ankle strap right here that gives the engineer boot its distinct look uh, from a cowboy boot otherwise it would just be another pull-on boot these chisos cowboy boots obviously too the lasts are different i'll get into that more in a second but the chisos very much almond shaped at the toe whereas these renav goods i helped design this last and uh it's very much rounded out at the toe. This is the type of last that I really prefer with a lot of, with raised walls in the vamp and a bump toe. I, I really love that. I find these boots the most comfortable. These boots I find a little bit constricting. I still love these boots. Uh, I went true to size on these. I actually don't know my size <laughs> in these. I've, uh, ever since I helped develop this last at Renav Goods, they know just to remake me the same boot in the same size. That's the essential comparison, uh, the cowboy boot to the engineer it's mainly going to be this ankle strap and of course this top strap at the shaft as well once again these boots really have a special place in my heart uh because i did help develop this this last and these boots through the good guys at renav goods they're probably at the top of my list of indonesian makers uh one thing i really like about them is they're there for you when when you need them they're really nice they're really responsive they only ask for half down deposit they don't ask for the full price up front uh, that way it sort of protects you in case anything happens you know shipping through china sometimes the chinese pull some some crazy stuff if something weird happens with the shipment renav goods obviously will rectify the situation. Renav Goods, they're easily at the top of my list. I love all the Indonesian makers, but Renav Goods, I really, really recommend them. They have really treated me well over the years. You know, I just get excited when I see the brand. Their passion comes through on my end as the end user. I've become good friends with those guys at the shop in recent years. They have a soft spot in my heart, especially since, since uh, prototyping these two and some years ago. They really have cemented themselves in my collection as one of my favorite makers, for sure. They've never let me down. They're super reliable and they're they're just good people. I would say if you're interested in getting started with Indonesian makers or nav goods is a good starting point. Every dollar you spend is gonna get you something top tier. You know, if I were to get something like this from Viberg, be $1,500. I think I paid around 650 for these i can't really remember but when you're saving that much money i don't really even keep a tally at that rate because it's just like well i'm saving so much money having these built and they're custom they're mto nobody else is going to have this boot on planet earth aside from you i also recently debuted a pair of engineer boots in dark brown shinky oiled horse butt just look at these things these are just absolutely insane i kind of wish that I would have entered these into the Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome because I have a feeling I would have won with those. <laughs> um, partly because this dark brown oiled shinky horse rump is a T-core. And uh, my Vibergs on the 2040 last are also in this exact leather. Also T-core brilliantly. And as you can see, portions of the outer paint are starting to wear off and expose the natural undertones and you can see on the inside of the shaft there what the uh what the leather looks like it's all natural so in other words the surface pigments are very much surface level only as they start to wear away they really start to show their patina not to mention the toe creases here are getting you know very fine micro ripples throughout here very beautiful i just love everything about the way that these are patinating up in addition to that yeah brilliant honeycombing up on the shaft here i'm gonna do my own 
update video on these and really show these in 4K. Needless to say, I can't get enough of <laughs> these boots. Obviously now, I have four pairs of Renav Goods Engineers. I'm obviously a fan. With that said, I will devote a video specifically to these. Back to these, so these are unworn. Now, these will not T-core and patinate the same way as the dark brown oiled Shinky horse butt because these are actually struck through. If you look on the inside, you'll see that it's black here. If it were natural here, then you can expect a similar patina. And that's one thing to notice, to note about leather is, you know, look at the outside, look at the other side, look at the reverse side. A lot of, a lot of consumers aren't, I'm no exception, are not well versed with this concept of looking at both sides of the leather. And sometimes you can't because the maker adds a lining. In this case, there is no lining, or it might be partially lined in the vamp. I'm not sure. But in the shaft, at least, there's no lining. So I could tell just by looking at the outer surface, okay, it's black on the outer surface. When you look at the inside, the rough outside is also black. And when I look at the cut edge, it is black all the way through. What that means, this leather is struck through. The black dye goes all the way through. So even if you were to sand it down or poke a hole through it, all you're gonna see is black through and through. The same consistent pigment all the way through. It's not gonna change. This pair is completely undyed, and so there's really no surprises there. Um, it started out as an off-white and morphed into a more of a golden veg tan color. Uh, so no surprises there. For that reason, these are probably going to maintain their look regardless of how much I wear them. They're probably going to form some toe creases here, but I can just tell you that the way that they placed the panels on this, this is the most thick leather out of the entire boot is on the vamp. So the toe creases I don't anticipate will be all that uh, remarkable. So in other words, these dark brown ones show their wear like crazy. These will not, these will hold their appearance a little bit more consistently over time. Looking at Renav Goods page, wow, they have done a lot of different engineers. I am very proud of them, actually. They have done, they're doing so many different wild types of engineers. They're doing a marbled engineer. They're, they're doing unstructured, more pointy toed engineers, which are very nice, similar to the flathead ones. I'm seeing iterations of the, the natural crust shell cordovan Wow, I'm seeing actually multiple iterations of that. This is going to be the um, Engineer 1506, black shinky horse butt, eight inches tall, velt shown construction, 270 degree welted, green cork half sole, woodsman heel, and this last is called the A11 structured toe. Velt shown, one of my commenters helped me out on that. The velt shown means field shoe. I believe it's a Dutch term for field shoe. I thought it meant a uh, beautiful welt. <laughs> Schoen is shoe and velt is field. So field shoe uh, construction. We've got this beautiful woodsman heel here. Nice curvaceous heel. Really thick vegetable tanned insole and midsole. And then yeah, that absolutely amazing. Anytime I have the option to get a Dr. Soul original outsole, I get the doc Dr. Soul original outsole. Yeah, you can never go wrong with olive. I, I got the olive on the black. I got the olive on <laughs> the crust. I got the olive on my burgundy. I got the olive on my brown, brown here. I always go for olive. I think olive really is the understated, underappreciated colors uh, for boots. I mean, olive it, green has become one of my favorite boot colors. And any chance I can incorporate green into my boots, I absolutely love it. Yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, what took me so dang long to get into engineer boots. Well, frankly, I thought I was an indie boot guy. I thought I was an indie boot, service boot exclusive type of a guy. I always thought that engineer boots were too much of a, an aggressive boot or too much of like a cowboy boot. And then, you know, I, I would see Jake at Almost Vintage Style always talking about engineers. And here he had gone down this path and sort of charted the way for guys like me who were noobs to this particular territory. And uh, it took me years, even after hearing him talk about it, like I was still on the fence. I'm like, I just don't see myself in engineer boots. That's why I started out light on an engineer light model 
in the six inch because it was that shaft. It's the shaft and not to mention it's the slip on. It, it makes me feel like it was too much of a cowboy boot. And you know, I like cowboy boots. I'm just, I don't think I'm a cowboy boot guy necessarily that's not to say i'm not open to the idea because after trying out the chisos i'm definitely i'm definitely not opposed to trying out more cowboy boots i'm definitely into them i think they're awesome and i love the heritage behind them and all that long story short it took me a while to finally warm up to the idea of engineers and uh probably one of the main reasons is seeing shia labeouf in indiana jones 4 obviously indiana jones is wearing the indie boot Shia LaBeouf is wearing the engineer boot. Okay, come on. Who realistically is gonna wanna emulate Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> Shia LaBeouf didn't do engineer boots any favors. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> now that I've finally garnered an appreciation for it, found a maker and a last and a look and a leather that I really love, I'm all in. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. It's like, okay, now that, now that it's right, it's right, I'm all in. And uh, in fact, I have another one in the works with Renav Goods. It's gonna be a marbled leather and uh i don't want to give too much away just yet but let's just say it's gonna be insane <laughs> one feature that i did want to point out on the on the engineer boots on the renavs is you see the the ankle strap it's so well secured it's double stitched down with a decorative inner stitch and yeah single stitched down here very beautiful ankle strap here when you look at the flat heads you see it's a it's got a simple box stitch here it's not a knock against these but the Renav goods style the way that they, they execute everything is very refined I really really love the patterning on these boots they, they even did it on these two you see the back heel stay you see the ankle strap here it's very decorative it's very expertly done not to mention I am just in love with this last this is one of the my favorite lasts ever it's it's super accommodating i mean i wear these and i just i just feel like in heaven you know walking around in these you got the double thick that's probably 15 ounces of veg tan beneath your feet right there that is thick maybe maybe more each one of these layers is probably it's probably 10 10 ounces uh just by my eye and so that's probably 20 ounces of veg tan beneath your feet i mean it doesn't get any more supportive than that. The only uh, downfall I will say to engineers is you probably need a boot jack to get them on and off. I definitely do. I have a bad back, and uh, this has saved my back. <laughs> you just pop your foot in there, <laughs> pull out the boot. It's it's wonderful. You, you step on here, put the other boot in, pop it off. It saves my back for sure. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. What do you think about these black engineer boots in Shinky horse butt? I'm in love. I will start wearing them and beating the crap out of them here eventually. But until then, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let's keep the love of boots alive. I will see y'all in my next video.